Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to bring you my spring TBR. I'm posting this a little bit early because I'm really anxious to get started. I have some particular priorities for this spring because I want to get my physical TBR down to zero. There are some specific rules and guidelines for this which I'll get into in a moment. If you're only here for the TBR, I should have timestamps down below so that you can skip ahead to the actual books. But when I say getting down to zero, there's a few things I want to keep in mind. So one being that I do own books that I don't plan on reading. Specifically, my husband has a couple of books and I do not need to read or get rid of his books in order to complete this challenge. Also, I do have ARCs and physical review copies from publishers that I have not yet read, but I have done a good job so far and want to continue to do so of reading those books when they come due or the publication is coming up. So I have some books that aren't coming out until like April or July, and I'm not stressing out about the fact that I haven't read them yet. I'm going to be discussing some of those books here, but essentially I kind of keep them in a different section of my brain. So this specifically is a list of books that I either physically bought myself with store credit, with a book deal, discount, things like that, books that were gifted to me from either generous subscribers, friends, and family members. So that is how I got these books, and I used to do the thing where when I bought a book, I would read it immediately. I would read it that day or that weekend and I kind of fell out of the habit. I started to buy books to read later and that was a mistake for me because I don't tend to enjoy books when I put them on my shelf and then don't read them for a long time. They turn into homework which is kind of how this TBR feels to me I'll be honest. These are books I was really excited when I bought but I bought them a long time ago and now they just feel like something I need to do. So I am going to push myself to complete this TBR so that I can get back down to zero and again this is not too put myself on a book ban, but the idea that if I go to the used bookstore and I pick up a book, I should have intentions to read it right away, and if I don't plan on reading it anytime soon, well then I probably shouldn't be buying it. So that's my plan, and I also think it'll be great because I do get a lot of generous gifts from, again, subscribers and so forth, and I know a lot of times they will give something with the hope or intention that I will hopefully get to it and read it sooner so that they can see my reaction, and I very much want to honor that, and so I think that this new TBR plan will make that happen. All that being said, let's Let's get into the actual books. First, let's talk about the horror books, starting with my patron book club. Now, for the month of March, our theme is horror comedy or horror satire, and so I'm actually excited because we're doing a horror fantasy, and that is Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I have read several books by Neil Gaiman and really enjoy his work, and I've never read anything by Terry Pratchett. I am a little nervous for this one because I've said many times that funny books, funny horror books, aren't always my thing. But again, I really love Nail Gaiman, and there was an Audible sale where I was able to pick up a copy that has a full cast narration, and that ended up coinciding perfectly with it being chosen for my book club, so really excited for it. Despite being a little bit nervous, I think it's actually going to work out well. We'll see. And of course, I will keep you posted. As always, if you are interested in supporting me financially and joining the book club, I do have a link down below. I have a private Discord where I share a little bit more of my personal life and get to talk in a little bit more detail about what I'm reading in live time. Anyway, moving on. And for April, the patron book club pick is going to be Hunted by Darcy Coates. And this is an indie author where I've only read one of her books before. And she writes a lot of haunted house stories, which is why I don't read a ton of her work. But this one is actually about a girl who goes hiking, she goes missing and then her friend believes that she's still alive and goes off to look for her. I believe it's a piece of survival horror, which is a subgenre I really enjoy. I do have a video coming on the topic full of recommendations, so stay tuned for that. It'll be out sometime. But in the meantime, I am excited for this one. I would like to read more of Darcy Coates, and yeah, this one definitely sounds up my alley, at least based off the synopsis. Next, I have some backlights books that I would like to get to, the first being the novella The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a novella by one of my favorite horror authors, and I definitely want to read more of his work. This one, as I know, is kind of a meta story that involves a final girl. I think it's kind of set or written as if it's like a movie, and it's just supposed to be very unusual in terms of a narrative format. It has low ratings on Goodreads, I think because of the uniqueness. So given the fact that I tend to have a popular taste, I'm hopeful I'll enjoy this one, but I have no idea. I just have to try it out. It's been on my list for way too long, and it's about time I got to it. And next up, I want to read Queen of Teeth by Hayley Piper. This is a horror novella that involves teeth on particular female body parts, let's say. I'm trying not to get demonetized here. This is a book or a short story 
novella that I was nervous to pick up because of that weird synopsis. I don't know if I want to read this book, but I did read a couple of books by Haley Piper last year that I ended up really liking. And I was on the podcast with the Books in Freezer with Stephanie, and she really encouraged me to give this a try. And then the author actually reached out on Twitter and said that, yes, it's safe. It's not as bad as it sounds, and I should check it out. So I am going to give it a try. I hope I love it. And obviously, I'm excited. You will find out how that goes very soon. Next, I want to read Lunar Park by Brent. Easton Ellis and this I want to read because of course if you follow my channel you happen to know that American Psycho was one of my favorite books of last year and so I know that this book it's not a direct sequel but it does take place somewhat afterwards or have a connection to that book. This is a very meta book that is about the author. It's fiction, but it's written as if it's not fiction and draws a lot of real life parallels. And so I do love when horror books kind of bend the line between what is real and what is not. I've really enjoyed that in the past. It's one of my favorite things about that book, Red X. And so I'm hoping I will like this one. And I had a last credit to use on Audible, so I actually used it to buy this book. For the sake of this video, I am focusing on getting down my physical TBR, but in future videos, I want to definitely focus on getting through my audio TBR, which isn't really long, so I might as well get started early. And I really want to get to Lunar Park. I think it could be a favorite and I'm just, hopeful. I'm hopeful. I really want to check it out. I just, I have high hopes for this one because of how much I loved American Psycho. Next up is Ghoul by Brian Keane, and this is a story that follows a group of boys that see a ghoul eating the dead in a cemetery. They go to tell people about it, and of course they don't believe them because they're boys telling crazy stories. And I believe that this is a coming age story. There might actually be a movie that was made based off of this. I might be wrong, so don't quote me on that. But I haven't read a lot of Brian Keane. I feel like he is extremely popular in booktube and Twitter circles, and so I would like to try more of his work, and hopefully this is a good one. I, my library doesn't have a lot of his books, so this is one that was available, and I think it's one of his most popular, so I'd love to hear opinions down below. Also, I want to attempt to read Tommy Knockers by Stephen King. I've been reading more Stephen King lately, and it's actually been going really well. I am very hit or miss with this author, but I'm actually getting more on the side of having more hits than misses lately, so I want to keep it up. I have heard mixed things about Tommy Knockers. I've heard it's like a sci-fi alien story, which is not always my favorite kind of Stephen King stories. I don't think he writes the best science fiction, but my friends want to read this book, and so I jumped online for a buddy read so hopefully they don't lead me astray. I'm kind of nervous for this one I'll be honest I don't have the highest hopes but I will try it and if I finish it I'll let you know. Next I want to read The Lake of the Dead which is a very popular Norwegian horror story that was gifted to me and again I really want to be reading my gifts as soon as they arrive so I hate the fact that I have a bit of a backlog. This one sounds fantastic. I've heard great things about it. The cover is beautiful and more importantly I hear that the story is just fantastic. High hopes. I'm gonna love it. It's really recently short and yeah, I just want to get to it soon. It's been sitting on my shelf for way too long and I gotta change that. And I always want to read basically all the new release horror books coming out, but there are two that are really exciting for me. The first one is Pinata by Leopoldo Gout. This is the same author who wrote Ghost Radio and I love that one. And so I'm very hopeful. I love this one as well. Basically it follows a mother who is living in New York with her daughters, but she goes to Mexico to work on a job. Things go terribly wrong. They go back to New York and well, something possibly follows her daughters home. It sounds like a possession story. It sounds super creepy. I tend to really love Mexican horror and yeah, high hopes for this one. I really think it's going to be favorite of the year, so please do not let it disappoint me. I will keep you posted because again, I obviously have a review copy. And last, I want to read Lone Woman by Victor Laval, which I believe is a horror story, but I've also heard that it's more historical fiction or literary fiction. But at this point, I love the author so much that I'm basically willing to read anything that he writes. I've heard really good early buzz and yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it no matter what category it fits into. All right, switching over to science fiction. I have a lot of books in this category, so bear with me. First, let's talk about my Patreon book club. So every third month we do a science fiction book. So in February, we're going to be doing Upgrade by Blake Crouch. This is actually a reread for me, but it's a book that I didn't actually remember reading. I can't remember if I even publicly reviewed it. So it probably doesn't hurt that it's getting a second chance in my book club. I know it's a sci-fi thriller. I don't really remember
remember the premise and I think that's a bad thing. But regardless, it will be so much fun to read with my book club. Even if I don't enjoy something, it's just fun to talk about and discuss online. And I'm doing this new thing in my Discord where I'm actually filming little like minute long videos and giving my reaction live time. It's like a poor man's vlog. It's not a good vlog. <laughs> don't sign up just for amazing video content, but it's kind of fun. They get to see my live reactions. I just record on my phone. So that's been fun. But yeah, I'm not sure how Upgrade is going to go on reread, but absolutely, if my book club wants to read it, I'm game. Let's do this. In terms of new releases, the one I'm probably most excited for is the third and I think final book in the Final Architecture series, all by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Of course, the first book being Shards of Earth. And then I went on to read Eyes of the Void. And so the last book is coming out right away. This is like epic science fiction with aliens that use Earth as a piece of architecture and redesign it and send humanity on the run. I love it so much. It's just big in scope. It has amazing world building. And yeah, I'm really excited to see this trilogy complete. Assuming it's a trilogy. I think it's a trilogy. Don't tell me if I'm wrong. Next, let's talk about more books I own and need to read. One of the first ones is 2010 by Arthur C. Clarke. If you saw my recent video, you know that I loved 2001 Space Odyssey, and so I'm very excited to continue on. I don't know much about this one, and I don't want to. I went to the first one super blind, and I want to do that again. I have high hopes that Arthur C. Clarke could become a favorite author of mine, and I'm really excited that I own a copy of this. I would like to own a copy of 2001. That one came from the library, the one that I was showing in that video, so I'll have to track that down. This one came from a garage sale. It was 50 cents, so obviously I had to buy it. Also at the same garage sale, also so 50 cents, also by the same author. I got a copy of Rendezvous with Rama. I know nothing about it and I'm okay with that. I love this little hardcover edition. And since I love 2001 so much, I'm very hopeful I will love this one as well. So let me know which one do you prefer, 2001 or Rendezvous with Rama, which is your favorite? So I'm excited to see how they compare for me. Next up is Deepness in the Sky by Werner Vinge. I loved his book that I read last year and I'm very eager to get to this one, which I believe is a prequel. And I've been thinking about that one a lot. So I've heard that this one for some readers is even better than the first book. And I'm hoping that's the case. I love the first book, but if that one could possibly be the worse or the lesser of the two, I can only imagine how good this one's gonna be. So very excited for that. And yeah, I got a copy at the used bookstore. So it's about time I got to this one. And also at a garage sale, I got a copy of Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson, the first book in the trilogy. And I'm a little bit lukewarm with this one on my TBR only because I've previously tried reading it. I got halfway through and was really turned on by the heavy focus on romance and relationships. And I wanted more of the hard science. Everyone promises me that this book is all about the hard science of setting up a colony on Mars. And when I went to read it, I was really surprised by the focus on the sleeping around with other people. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a prude. I just want the science. I want the science. I don't care about the romance. So I'm going to try it again going in with more lessened expectations and hopefully I enjoy it more this time around. Also, I want to make sure that I'm reading my Christmas gifts. I still need to read Sinners by Pat Cardigan, which I recently showed in a book haul. And so yes, this is cyberpunk written by a female author. I know nothing about the plot as I did when I went to show it in my book haul. So we will find out together what it's all about. And I also have a copy of Wool by Hugh Howey, which I've heard amazing things about this dystopian. I know it's the first in, I believe, a trilogy. And I definitely want to see what it's all about. This is one I bought forever ago through Book Outlet. I do have a link down below if you want to check out the site. I have a coupon. But yeah, this is one I bought and I thought I was going to read right away and then it didn't happen. Story of my life, I need to turn that around. I used to be so much better when it came to buying and reading books immediately. So I can't wait to get back to that experience. And also from Book Outlet, I got the first trilogy or first three books in the Foundation series, all by Isaac Asimov. I love these editions. So the first one being Foundation. I think the second is Foundation Empire and then the third is Second Foundation which always seems wrong to me. Tell me, is this not the third book? That seems horribly wrong. So someone's probably yelling at me in the comment section. <laughs> Tell me if I have the order wrong. But regardless, I'm excited to read these. I know this is a TV show. And yeah, it's about time I got to these classics. And I'm also planning to do some buddy reads with some fellow sci-fi readers and booktubers. And so that is Thomas, Whitney, and Michael have their channels linked down below. The first book we're talking about reading is Grass by Sherry Chepper, which I believe is a story set on a planet where there is this beautiful grass that is growing and there's a virus 
that is affecting other worlds, but it doesn't affect them there. So this place is seen as a bit of a sanctuary or a utopia. I don't know much more about it. I might have just gotten the synopsis wrong, but I definitely want to check it out. Once again, I am trying to read more science fiction by women and hopefully find new favorites. And obviously I'm hoping that this will be one of those new favorites. And Whitney and I would also like to read Player of Games by Ian Banks. And this is the second book in the Culture series, but a lot of you have promised me that you actually can and almost should read them out of order. I've heard that the first book is not the best entry point. It's not as representative of the later books. And I know this second book involves a game involving virtual reality, which definitely sounds a lot more up my alley. So I'm very excited to go in there. And again, if you think I'm making a huge mistake by not starting with book one, let me know in the comments. You might be able to change our minds. And finally, let's talk some fantasy, starting with this one here. This is Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin, which of course is a historical telling of the Targaryens. I still have not watched the TV show, which is part of the reason I wanted to read the book, but story of my life. I got this gift as a birthday present and my birthday is in July. So it's about time I got back to it. I got about halfway through and for reasons I had to put it down and I am eager to get back to it, to finish it. It's a chunky one, but it's a really good one. So I love George R. R. Martin. I love the world of ice and fire. And yeah, I'm excited to come back to this one and finally finish it up. Along similar lines, I also want to go back to The Scar by Chana Mieville. I actually read partway through this book and that's when I got really, really sick in the fall. And I was coming down with a fever and I was just way too sick to be enjoying reading anything. So I did put this book down and just never really got back to it. I have read Perdita Street Station, which I liked. It was one of my favorites of the year. And so I'm eager to read this one too. I've heard some people say that they like it even better. This is weird fantasy that blends together other genres and this one is more set in the sea and I definitely like that seafaring atmosphere or setting so I'm definitely excited to get back to this one and I'm hoping I'll enjoy it more than I was before but again I was just getting really really sick so I, my enjoyment of it kind of went down as my fever was going up if that makes sense. So I think it was more the experience rather than the book itself. And I want to get to the third book in the Drowning Empire series that starts with the Bone Shard Dog. I believe the third one comes out in April and it should be the last. I think it's a trilogy. This is a series about the daughter of an emperor who has lost her memory. She's trying to piece things together. And we also follow a smuggler. The stories get pulled together. I really love the first one. It has some really cool kind of dark magic within it. The second one, I'll be honest, had a little bit more romance than I would have liked, but I'm still in it for the long game. So I'm eager to see how the series will all wrap up in the final book. But yeah, I'm hoping there's less romance. There was too much romance in book two. It kind of let me down. But regardless, I love a lot about this series and I do want to see how it all comes together. Also on my list is the Night Angel Trilogy by Brent Weeks. I know there is a new book coming out by Orbitz and I'm hoping I'm going to get a review copy. And so I'm eager to check out the original books, which I believe involve an assassin. I have really enjoyed the Lightbringer series that starts with the Black Prism. And I've heard that this series isn't as strong, but again, with a new book coming out, it's the perfect time for me to visit his backlist and see if I enjoy that. So I'll keep you posted there with reviews as always, and hopefully again to review the new book when it comes out, which is soon, I think. Also, I really want to read Vita Nostra, which is a dark academia book that involves a girl who is approached by a man. He tells her to run every day and in exchange he gives her coins and then the story goes from there. This is one that I just hear is incredibly weird. It kind of subverts the tropes. It's just unusual, it's dark, it's messed up. And those are a lot of my favorite buzzwords. So I'm very excited for this one. I've been wanting to get into more dark academia. And this one has just really caught my attention. It's translated. And I just found out that there is a sequel that is coming out soon. So I obviously want to read the first book so that if I like it, I'll be ready to read the next. So if you've read this one, I would love to hear opinions in the comments because again, it's one that just I know I've heard really unique things about it. I don't think everyone loves it, but I tend to like unpopular or unique books. So I'm hoping this one will be right up my alley. And finally, I want to read Prior of an Orange Tree by Samantha Shanning. This is actually a rollover from my winter TBR. I try not to do that too often because I think it's repetitive if I just keep listing the same books every single time I do a TBR video. But this is an epic fantasy standalone story involving a pair of sapphic lovers and there are dragons and there's now a prequel that is coming out very soon and so I need to read the first chunky book and so I can read the second chunky prequel and so I will report back once I've read it. I feel like this book is a booktube darling and I definitely enjoy sapphic romance. I love epic stories and obviously hopefully I love this one especially how long it is. If I don't love it 
it'll be hard for me to push through to the end, but I have a good feeling about it. It definitely sounds up my alley, so I'll keep you posted. Stay tuned. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know, are there any books on my list that you're also planning on reading? Are there any books that you think I'm going to love or maybe hate? I want those opinions too. I'd also love to hear where you are at with your TBR journey. Are you someone who is trying to work and lessen or reduce your TBR, or are you happy with the state that it's at? Again, I don't want to shame people for owning a lot of books. If you enjoy buying books and you don't mind that you're not immediately reading them, that is great. I just realized that I was actually getting a lot of unhappiness from my unread book collection. I would look at them and it just felt like homework. They didn't make me happy. They felt like work that I had to do. And that's not the reason I collect books. For the most part, I actually try to typically only buy books that I've already read and love. So if you look at my Amazon wish list, a lot of those are books that are all already favorites that I'm just trying to track down copies. But really, again, sometimes it's just fun to go to a bookstore and pick up a book that you haven't read before, book that you think might be a new favorite, bring it home. And what I want to do is just take that final step and pick it up and read it immediately. If it turns out to be a favorite, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. But I want to experience it right away so that I have the opportunity to maximize that enjoyment. So that's my plan, if that makes sense. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror thrillers, science fiction, and fantasy. If you want to help me out with this video, you can give me a thumbs up. You can drop a comment, even if it's just a stack of books. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.